thank the council for, for the award uh, on behalf of uh, EMAR Properties and, um, uh, and also congratulate the other winners and especially Bill Patterson. Uh, today we're not going to talk about the technical aspects of the building so much. We're going to talk about l looking back at the last year and what it's accomplished. Uh, we're going to be looking at an overview, which I think uh, Mohammed Alibar would, probably would, would have given. Uh, take a look at the little-known uh, part that uh, SOM had in the interiors of, of Burj Khalifa and the art program. And then, then we're going to look at a more practical side of how and why um, a project like this was successful. And then take a look at the uh, year of 2010, which was a big year for the building. Uh, first, uh, the, the, when EMAR came to us, they had a vision of creating this tall building in the heart of the Burj Dubai uh, master plan. Uh, at that time, the tower was called Burj Dubai as well. And uh, th this, as a centerpiece, was to be the catalyst for development around it. Uh, and, and, and you look at the examples of both uh, Sears and Hancock here in town and what that's done to, to uh, North Michigan Avenue and, and the west side of the loop, uh, you start to understand what it did to property values. But uh, it, within the context, there was mostly uh, residential with uh, uh, many new hotels and uh, a large shopping mall, which became w the largest in the world as well. Uh, the, today, the, the downtown D uh, Dubai is a th uh, thriving urban habitat. And while we talk about tall buildings at, here at the council, we also need to really reinforce the fact that these buildings are in urban habitats. In, in Dubai, this urban habitat is unlike any other. It's the only place where you really can, a pedestrian can really walk around and, and see, uh, see the building from uh, different sides. And also uh, look at other uh, aspects of the master plan that, that have made it famous, including the mall and uh, water features. The mall itself is a uh, very large, 12, 12 million square feet. And uh, just recently, uh, was it two weeks ago, had uh, they talk about footfall in terms of uh, retail uh, success. And while they have a, a large number of visitors every, every week, uh, they, ha they hit 250,000 people in one day. Uh, the Dubai Fountain, which is uh, done by the same designers that did the Bellagio Fountain in, uh, in, uh, in Las Vegas, has become a, a major feature, especially at night with the uh, music and light show. Uh, the, ho the hotels that they feature in the master plan as well are, are, are world class. Uh, the address uh, and the newly opened uh, Armani Hotel. But uh, Burj as an overview is, you know, eight, is 828 uh, meters, which was just announced this year. That's really 160 floors, but uh, the equivalent uh, of over 200 stories. It's about th uh, 5 million square feet in total, with 3, 000, 3 million being above grade and 2 million below. Um, <coughs> about a, a million eight. Uh, in terms of residential, uh, about 11, almost 1,100 uh, units. And then uh, we're featuring the, new, the newest uh, features to the building, which include at the top the world's tallest, uh, world's highest observation deck, and also uh, the, the, the first uh, Armani Hotel with this unique stay at Armani lifestyle. And, and a new restaurant that's not open yet um, is uh, Atmosphere, which would be just below the observation deck, be the tallest, the highest restaurant in the world. The EMAR considers this to be a triumph of humanity. It was a global cooperation. Uh, we, uh, Anthony talked about the building being a, uh, a, a building for the world. Well, the world helped build it in, in terms of uh, the people that were uh, involved in it. And I'd like to note that there's uh, the, the two, two striking uh, uh, numbers that stand out in this chart is that over 400,000 hours, man hours of design time and also over 22 million uh, construction man hours. Uh, the, the building is really comprised of uh, uh, mixed-use buildings, so starting at the top, there's, a, there's corporate office suites that are, that are actually, some are, are, are shell space, some are, are totally fit out and designed by our, entire, our interior design team, uh, led by Nada Andrak in Chicago. Below that is at the top, um, the, the observation deck, and the residences, which is about almost 1,100 Units which uh, SOM uh, laid out from the, from the outset and actually took over the interior design of later on. Uh, the Armani Hotel, which occupies the base of the building. Uh, Mohammed always talks about the, the Burj Khalifa effect and what it did for the city of, of, of Dubai and continues even, even in these tough economic times. Um, it, 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 it has become a catalyst for tourism. Um, and Mohammed, I remember Mohammed saying to me just recently that he knew it was a, he, he made uh, a great gesture here 
and was successful because he, he saw a young family from a third world country standing there posing in front of the building and taking their picture. This to him was a, a great accomplishment. Now, the, the interiors of uh, Burj Khalifa uh, is, is a wide range of things. There's um, public spaces th uh, sprinkled throughout the tower that relate directly to the residential. Uh, th this is outside the apartment, so all the common areas are quite um, fitted out in, in a very high, high, uh, high uh, way. Um, this is, these are all done by uh, the, the SOM interior design team. Uh, with the, ex the only thing that we didn't do in the building was the Armani Hotel, which was done by uh, Giorgio himself. Uh, this happens to be the uh, corporate office lobby. We, there's also amenity spaces up in the tower, including Health Club, which really uh, are also extended to the outside. On the, the upper terraces, there's spaces where people can actually get in swimming pools out on the uh, upper, upper terraces. The other uh, little-known story that we can tell about uh, Burj Khalifa is the art program. Uh, uh, Mohammed came to us and asked us to put together an art program, and, and uh, th this was led by Nada and myself. And uh, we, we kind of looked at each other, and we never really had done that before. But the, in the history of uh, SOM, uh, in, in the tradition, there's always art associated with, our, with the buildings. But in this case, we took um, the, the building apart and really spotted every place where we thought art should be and, uh, in all these public spaces. So it yielded over 500 pieces of art which later on became commissioned uh, art. And on, on each level of the residential, uh, based on the number of the floor, the, the number is incorporated in the art. Now, some of the, some of the pieces, you have to look real hard to find it, but, but it's there. The feature piece is in the residential lobby where we undertook uh, 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 proposals by several world uh, leading artists. Uh, we had eight, a total of eight submissions. And at the end of the day, we selected uh, Jama Plensa uh, world, his world voices. Uh, Jama is the same uh, artist here in Chicago that uh, did the Crown Fountain, which is uh, quite successful and interactive piece in uh, Millennium Park. The the, <clears throat> the sculpture itself is uh, uh, composed of 196 symbols, which represent the 196 co uh, countries of the world. They're all varying sizes and shapes. And, and uh, we actually have water dropping on several of them to create this little ping, ping, ping that uh, Jean wanted to, uh, to accomplish. Now, Bill and I, we've been talking about this for a long time, and uh, we thought that we would just share with you what we thought were, were the top 10 design and engineering keys to, to making the tower successful. <clears throat> in, in good uh, uh, late night television, we're going to go backwards, okay? We're going to start with, uh, uh, we have a list of 10, <clears throat> and uh, well, we had a hard time coming up with the, with the right 10 in the right order, so don't take them too, too particular. Uh, but it was a huge effort. Uh, the, uh, if if the, you look at the list, you hear the, all the firms that were involved, world-class world, world uh, consulting companies, Many of the people who are here in the room, I, I bet if I asked, uh, how about everybody who worked on Burj, raise your hand. Let's see how many people are out here. A few? Nobody worked on uh, it. Anyway, but there's a, a, lot, a lot of uh, these firms are well, here, here today. As a, in the past, you know, all the consultants only came around when there was food, so I bet you they'd be all at the dinner. <laughs> uh, you know, certainly the, the vertical transportation, you know, in the time after 9-11, uh, the whole thing about how do, you get, how do you service something that's so tall, how do you get people out, Tremendous amount of work was, was done on that, so you know it's very critical in all tall buildings, but certainly in this one it was, it was a major consideration. Number eight was very key, and uh, in, the, in a building like this, you can't separate aesthetics and engineering. Uh, they go hand in hand. Uh, uh, this, this, uh, this project evolved over a long period of time through a number of different uh, tests in terms of wind, wind studies and engineering studies. Uh, Coupled with a, a simultaneous look at the aesthetics of the building, uh, you know, and you know, uh, Adrian Smith, who's in the audience today, uh, this is a series of the studies that he did just on the top on the on different ways of shaping it. Uh, wind engineering, <clears throat> yeah. For those of you who've heard, heard our technical lectures on the building, which we're not going to do today, is uh, you know, the tall building is dominated by the, by by wind, and what makes this one a, a bit unique is we designed it in the wind tunnel. Uh, we would never ever have achieved what we did. In fact. Uh, 
Our first design, the one we used to uh, win the competition, was uh, 10 meters taller than the Taipei 101. And in the course of the design, it grew 300 meters, 1,000 feet. And, and it, was, it was through this interactive design process, working with uh, RWDI as the wind consultant and, and uh, Western Ontario as a, as a reviewing uh, consultant, we were able to actually uh, use it as part of the design process. Number six. Construction technology. Um, it, is, it is amazing the things that uh, uh, Samsung uh, B6 and uh, Arabtech did to build this building. They turned it into a vertical factory. Uh, that they, they did things that had never been done before. Pumping concrete uh, 600 meters in the air. Uh, I remember uh, uh, the, uh, uh, there was a little discussion about this uh, at, the, at the time as uh, one time I said it was, uh, I was asked about the building, I was, uh, construction, I said, oh, that's, that's pretty un uneventful. And, um, and to, to me, that's the greatest compliment you can ever give to a contractor, that they, they, they planned it out, they put it together, and it went together. It was uneventful. It, uh, it, was, it was a great, great effort. Number five is structural engineering. Now, it's, I'm, I'm going I'm to talk about it first. But you have to talk about it second. But the, the, it didn't hurt to have one of the best tall building structural engineers in the world. Uh, Fritz Leinhardt uh, award winner, gold medalist for I struck E, Bill Baker. Uh, thank you. Anyway, uh, what was interesting about this, it's a design, it's, it's a, it's a design paradigm change. He paid change. me for that one. Uh, it, it comes to issues of scale. Uh, if I were twice as tall, I'd be twice as wide, I'd be twice as thick, I'd weigh eight times as much. So, you, so I don't scale. You could not scale the Sears Tower or, or, or any of the existing uh, systems we had to this great height. You had to come up with something new. And we were able to come up with something that could be uh, wider but not thicker. That you have um, the, the columns are at, uh, at nine meters on center, so you have almost, and the columns are only uh, a little over two foot wide, so you have lots of outside glass. Uh, so you're in this building, which is, you, you wouldn't believe that when you're in here, you're not in just an ordinary building, that, it, that it's not encumbered by its height, but, but, but actually is able to go to a great heights by, by, by recognizing that we needed a new design paradigm. Number four, uh, the SOM multidisciplinary team and the coordination, coordination efforts that they did during the, the time that we were doing uh, the design through the working drawings. Uh, we talk. We talk about the coordination uh, being uh, very key. Uh, there, there was no room for error in a building like this. There's not much room anywhere in the building for anything. Uh, so everything had to be coordinated from top to bottom, and, and a tremendous amount of hours spent uh, just getting that right. You know, very, very critical, of course, is is the the, the team. Okay, uh, you know, the client, uh, the design team. Uh, Turner, uh, Middle East, Turner International, pulling together, and, and the contractors. It's, uh, it's, you know, there's, when we were working on this project, there were a number, uh, quite a number of uh, tall buildings of similar height that were announced and not completed. And, and I think a, a lot of that, one of our successes, we did have a very good uh, core, core team. But if you look at the core team for SOM, you know, it was comprised of Bill and myself, of course, Adrian, uh, who was a key, key member of that team. Um, Ray Clark, who's a, uh, a retired partner of SOM. Um, Ed Thompson, who had years of experience in managing uh, very large, complex buildings. For Turner, you know, we have in the crowd tonight, we have Nick Bellotti from Turner International in New York, and we have Ali O'Day, who still sits on the site today, helping finish uh, everything out. And of course, Samsung, who really, really did a lot of the hard, hard uh, lifting in terms of lifting concrete, too, for that matter. But uh, we have uh, Ab Abdul, uh, Ahmed Abdurazak and, and uh, one of our favorite uh, friends, Mr. K.J. Kim. The, now, we couldn't, you know, I always say the top, there's a two or three things that makes these buildings uh, happen, and one of them has to be mark, market and financial diligence. Uh, during the seven and, and eight years of uh, time that we spent in, in Dubai, we saw a lot of developers fail because they really didn't know what they were doing. But we, uh, look, look back in history at the seven, seven years ago and what the market was like in Dubai. Timing was always a key issue in all the discussions we, we, we had with EMR. The timing of when withdrawings were going out, when certain publicity statements would be made, when marketing efforts would occur. That, that, let, that alone is one of the major factors, and that's why it's ranked number two. And the number one, 
biggest uh, factor is EMAR, our client. You know, someone has to have the dream, okay? Uh, we as architects and engineers and contractors can only, we can't, we can't, we can, we can help have, ha, realize the dream, but someone has to have the dream. And, and uh, it was the uh, Mohammed Olivar and uh, the, the people in, in Dubai who had the dream and the wherewithal to take what was basically a piece of desert, it was an empty uh, military base, and turn it into this uh, huge development. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a vote of optimism, it's a vote of hope, it's, it's people who are, who are thinking about the future. Um, in, in a very, very positive manner who create these skyscrapers. And, and so clearly, you know, without, the, uh, without that vision, uh, there, there would be nothing. So we thought we'd take a look back at the, at the year, um, and starting with uh, the inauguration that happened on January 4th. Um, Bill and I were there with Nada and uh, a, few other, a few other people. And we wanted to point out the media attention that this project has got from, from the beginning. Uh, but uh, we, we've, uh, through our, our uh, public relations firm, we've found that there's over 100 million media I I in impressions. That means in print, digital, uh, other, uh, t uh, TV, video, um, which, which uh, was uh, an incredible number. Uh, during that day, I know Bill and I were, were interviewed several times. Adrian was interviewed, uh, Nada. Uh, we came, became stars there for five minutes. Yeah. Our 15 minutes are up. Yeah. <laughs> The, during the inauguration, uh, the um, two things happened. The first thing happened that we didn't know that there was a name change. Nobody knew about that, even though they had stone obelisks in the plaza built that, would, that really nobody ever knew, knew about, but uh, the name changed from Burj Dubai to Burj Khalifa. The second one was that the height uh, uh, was finally announced. Now, during, it's really funny to note that Bill and I, on that day, we're sitting there looking at a sketch and confirming that the, the height was 828 meters. I think we did that with uh, Peter Weissmetal. So these, these are just a few shots of that, that evening, which was quite spectacular. A very, very emotional event um, for anybody involved with the project. Uh, you know, I, for a minute, minute there, we, we, we'd worked over six years on the project, and I thought that EMAR was going to blow it up in 15 minutes. As a yeah. structural engineer, I was, I was thinking, this is not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. You know? <laughs> uh, the, the next big event this year was uh, on April 27th, the opening of the Ar Ar Armani Hotel. Now, uh, EMAR has entered into an agreement to do 11 uh, hotels around the world uh, with, with Giorgio, and this was the first one that they undertook. So th that, that night was really a kind of black tie gala. Uh, that's me trying to make sure that the models were all in, uh, staying out of trouble. And, uh, but there was a big, there was dinners in every uh, restaurant of the hotel and also a, a pretty nice fashion show. And then a late night uh, in Privé, which was their, their uh, uh, nightclub. Now, we, we look at the, at the year and um, Burj has uh, either been shortlisted or uh, received uh, up to 12 awards, including the award that we're getting today. And uh, one thing that I wanted to note, it's not, the number doesn't really matter. It's the fact that the, the distribution of, of, of awards that are getting are almost 50-50. It's architecture and engineering, which really reinforces the fact that this building, uh, a tall building like this, needs to be a collaboration between uh, architects and engineers. We have a short video that uh, came to us uh, from uh, EMAR.
Thank you.